my name is satinath sharangi i work in the bhopal group for information and action i am also the managing trustee of the sambhavna trust clinic that provides free medical care to the survivors of the human carbide disaster in bhopal i came to know about the disaster from a radio report and it was very sketchy nothing was mentioned the name of the uh, factory was not mentioned it just said that there was a leak and that some people had died so i thought i could maybe possibly help and i came to bhopal with the intention of staying for a week and helping people out but as the week went on i found that it was not possible to leave bhopal because there were so many people in such utter misery and facing such helplessness so i have continued to stay and i've been part of uh, supporting survivors struggle agitations i've been part of street fighting i've been part of fighting in the courts i have taken part in research in publication and through all of this what i have tried to do is provide support to the survivors who continue to battle some of the most powerful forces in the world including the united states government that is supporting dow chemical company that is the current owner of union carbide corporation and most of this fight have been has been for justice and for an opportunity for a life of dignity both of which have been denied in the last 32 years what i have witnessed the death of hundreds of friends over the years people are still dying people who have been exposed when they were 4 or 5 or 6 year old are dying in their mid 30s early 40s untimely painful deaths and not just that we find that the next generation is marked by carbide poisons babies born with horrific birth defects children with developmental disorders they have to carry all their life and on top of that is the ongoing problem of contamination of the soil and ground water in and around the factory and this is continuing to find new victims every day the places as far as 3 and 1/2 kilometers uh, away from the factory are contaminated with chemicals that cause cancers cause birth defects cause damage to the lungs liver kidneys and the brain and in all of this what the we find that the both the governments at the state and at the central level have supported the american corporations that are committing this crime in fact the crime would not have been possible the crimes by these corporations dow chemical and union carbide would not have been possible without the overt and covert support of the united states government and the indian government and this unholy collusion against the people continues and that is the main reason why people continue to suffer and die till today in this we have found that indian carbide had used every trick in the bag to evade its liability we have found how disastrously the american judiciary has failed the people has failed the issue of justice and has continued to treat this case as something that doesn't belong to the us court the fact is the crime was hatched in the usa it was in union carbide's danbury connecticut headquarters that the design of the bhopal plant was made and was deliberately under designed to achieve a cost cutting of 30% it was this cost cutting this hazardous design that is at the core of the disaster 
So Union Carbide Corporation USA knowingly ran a hazardously designed factory in an unsafe location and to further complicate matters cut down vital safety systems just prior to the disaster. In all senses it was a disaster waiting to happen and it was a disaster that was caused deliberately by putting the lives of people secondary to making maximizing profit. So my question to you would be do you think this was an accident or a genocide? This wasn't an accident because there were at least uh, for last four, the there were warnings since 1980. That the disaster took place in December 84, but there were warnings from 1980. A whole, whole number of, at times, some 30 to 40 workers were hospitalized. So, do you think it was a genocide or an accident? There was nothing accidental about the disaster, because there was there were ample warnings and at least since 1980, which is when there were a series of accidents within the factory that made workers well, had to be hospitalized. In fact, one worker died in December 81. But most of all, in 1982, two years before the disaster, there was a safety audit by engineers from Charleston, West Virginia. And this safety audit pointed out 30 major hazards inside the factory, 11 of which were in the MIC-7 unit. And yet, the management did nothing to take care of these problems because it would cost money. So, in the, in the same year that the disaster in Bhopal took place, there was a similar, albeit smaller incident in uh, Institute West Virginia, where there was again entry of water and leak of some MIC and yet no, none of this ever reached the Bhopal uh, factory. Bhopal, none of the, the news that this could yet actually happen never reached Bhopal. So in all senses it was a, a deliberate, a, it was a disaster that was waiting to happen, that was allowed to happen knowingly with scant regard for people's health or lives. So my next question to you would be, you know that all the major companies have now come together. Now there is one, Bayer Monsanto, Dow DuPont, Syngenta, ChemChina. What hope is there for the people, the warriors of Bhopal? I think it just means that more and more victims of these companies have to come together as they are forming these cartels because they are, would be, be, that, that would be too powerful. And what we need to do, we need to understand that we, would, we do not have the government on our side and push comes to serve, the judiciary doesn't help us. We need not even expect help from the established scientific institutions that are supposed to regulate or supposed to monitor. All we have is ourselves. All the victims of the world have is themselves and their, and their fellow sufferers. And all have to come together. That is our only hope. What message do you think you want to give to Dow DuPont? Is that for the, 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 the battle on Bhopal is ongoing, it's still not over? And that in this battle, it's a, it's a very uh, skewed battle where on one side you have some of the poorest people in the city uh, who have very little resources, whose, whose health is down, whose fa who have, have enough economic hardships to bother about, and yet they continue to fight, yet they continue to win. And that we will con that we want to tell these companies that not just us, but our children and their children will continue to battle so long as there is injustice, so long as these corporations put profit before human survival. What is, in your opinion, the people's verdict on Dow DuPont? 
are they guilty they are decidedly they are guilty not just in one place but they are guilty of committing crimes against the entire humanity the unep report of 2012 shows that industrial pollution is among the top 5 causes of death worldwide that gives you an idea of the number of people dying needless deaths just so the the cash bells ring and this will this should be unacceptable by every person in this world and i'm sure that one day these these uh, corporations will have restrictions put on them and that people will refuse to go along with this poisoned air and water and soil so my final question to you is now you're a, you're a father i i i know that what would you do if these companies try and poison your child or your child's food i will do as whatever is in my power and i'll try and whatever um, our response always is direct action to cause maximum uh, loss to to these companies either loss to their goodwill or to their assets or cause as much damage to them as possible so that they do not uh, are not able to peddle their false image and false smiles and false notions of development